Hello, everyone. Welcome. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm very excited to be here today for the Not Too Shabby Shop. This video is part of a blog hop showing the latest release. So let's jump right into it. This first stamp set is called Spring is in the Air. And I just love all of the images, especially the little duck and the bunny with the umbrellas. The sentiments say, spring is in the air, hello, hip hooray, and I'm here rain or shine. I am so ready for some springtime card crafting. This next one is called Picnic Fun. And the sentiments say, hey cutie pie, picnic fun, and you're invited. I love all the images in this set, especially the little picnic table. It's so cute. Next up is the stamp set called Summertime Buddies. Perfect for getting a head start on your summertime card crafting. The sentiments say summertime, time for a break, floating by to say hi, and get your shine on. The last set is called Tea Time Buddies, and I just love the macaroon cookies and the little mouse and the bunny in these teacups. The sentiments say, to my best tea, you're a sweetie, tea time and tea addict. And also, merci. And isn't that little smiley face darling? You can stamp it on your different cookies if you want. So these are the four new stamp sets in the Not Too Shabby Shop. And for this video, I'm going to be crafting with this stamp set, the Spring is in the Air set. I'll have more information for you in the description below as well as a 10% off coupon code. For card number one, I decided to stamp out this darling little bunny image onto a piece of Stonehenge colored pencil paper. I pulled out my Faber-Castell colored pencils and I'm going to color this in using them. This paper is really fabulous because it has a very fine texture to it and it really makes your colored pencil work look great. I'm coloring the umbrella in with three different colors of yellow and I wanted a little bit of a darker shadow. So I added a kind of a brownish terracotta color in the shadows. I'm also coloring in the little bunny's boots with yellow. I want the bunny to be white, so I'm just adding a few shadows with some gray colored pencils. Next, I'm going to add some pink to the bunny's ears and little cheeks. I love how the little cheeks are drawn in like that. And then I just keep on adding layers until I'm happy with it. For the umbrella handle, I'm going to use the same kind of orangey brown terracotta colored pencil. And then I'm just adding shadows with a dark gray colored pencil. And that's it for the coloring. This was so fast and fun to color in. I made sure to keep the stamp image on the door of my Misty so that I could restamp it and freshen up the lines. This step really helps to make your image pop again. And then I did fussy cut this off camera. My next step is to do my background panel and I love creating my own pattern paper. So I'm going to use all of the smaller images from this stamp set and I'm stamping them around the panel with some green ink this provides a fun tone on tone color. It's just more subtle. It's one of my favorite techniques to do. It's just fun. I usually start out with my larger images first, but I was able to get this umbrella in on some of the empty spots. And I'm also stamping out the sentiment that says hip hooray. I just love how this panel turned out. This stamp set is just packed with darling images. I'm going to pop up my bunny with some foam tape. And I'm going to adhere it to a little piece of vellum that I cut out with a circle die. I also stamped out and colored in the rainbow image. This rainbow is so cute. It even has a little scalloped line in the middle of it. And I'm just going to put foam tape behind this and pop it up on a piece of vellum. For my sentiment, I stamped it out on a piece of yellow cardstock and it just says spring is in the air. And I'm popping up all three of my circles. And now I can adhere them onto my pattern paper. And I'm putting the glue where it will be well hidden behind the image. Otherwise, you will be able to see it behind the vellum. 
I also cut out my pattern paper with a wonky stitch die. Just wanted to make it a little bit smaller so that I could attach it to my yellow card base. I like how the yellow card stock peeks out behind my green panel. And then for a few rainbow confetti pieces. And that's all there is for card number one. Isn't that bunny just adorable? I just love it. On the inside, I stamped the watering can in yellow ink. On card number two, I'm stamping out some of my images onto a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth paper. This is a great paper to use with your watercolor brushes. And that's how I'm going to color these images in. I'm also stamping my images onto a piece of post-it note paper. This is the full adhesive back paper. I love this stuff. And I'm going to be doing some masking. So once I have it cut out, I'm going to protect my image. And then I can stamp out the next image right next to it, slightly overlapping. And I'm going to stamp it a little bit higher so that it looks like the bunny is slightly behind the duck. And the next image I'm going to stamp is the water can with the flowers. I'm putting the mask over the bunny and I didn't cut out the full image because I only needed the right side of it. Here's this cute little water can and I'm making sure to put it at the same level as the bunny so it looks like it's right next to the bunny but still a little bit behind my duck. The ink I'm using is Versafine Onyx Black ink. This is a great ink to use when you're going to watercolor. So here is my little scene. And then I'm pulling out my Arteza watercolor brushes. These are so fun to play with. I want my watercolor scene to have a very soft tone to it. So I'm putting down a little bit of color and then I'm drawing it out with my water brush. This isn't watercolor paper. It will take a little bit of water, but if I scrub it too much with my brush, the paper will start peeling. So I'm being careful not to scrub the brush around too much. So I'm putting my colors down darkest in the shadows, and then I'm just drawing out the color. The bunny is going to be white again, so I'm just putting some gray tones down in the shadows. You could, of course, just stamp your images directly onto watercolor paper. But I wanted to use this Bristol Smooth just because it plays so well with these Arteza watercolor brushes. Just, you get a beautiful blend. The little rain boots on the bunny, I'm just coloring in a very pale red. Don't you just love their little rain boots? They're so cute. And then for the watering can, I'm trying to make it look metallic by using some flicking motions and some gray water brushes. And I'm leaving a highlight right down the middle of it. The little flowers, I'm going to color in with some bright pinks. And then draw out the color again with my water brush. And now to color in a background for these images, I'm putting in some grass around the little critters. And then I'm drawing it down with my water brush. For the grass, I'm just doing little flicking motions. I need to put a little bit of ground underneath the critters and the watering can. And then I go back and forth with different colors, just adding a little bit of dimension in the scene. It's going to be very simple. Once the paint is dry, it lightens up a bit. So later on, I do come back and add more shadows under their feet. I'm just adding a little more color to the flowers, just to brighten it up a little bit more. Once this is completely dry, I'm actually going to come in with some Jelly Roll pens. I didn't want to add any more water to this paper to prevent the peeling, so I'm going to add a few shadow lines with my Jelly Roll pens. It just adds a cute, sketchy touch to it. I use my white Jelly Roll pen a lot to add highlights, and I do that here as well, but it was fun to add shadows with these Jelly Roll pens. And then I'm putting a little bit of a darker orange on the shadow on this yellow umbrella. 
And here I come in with the white Jelly Roll pen and even a silver one for this uh, watering can. I'm going to allow this to dry completely. And then I'm going to pull out a blue water brush just to add an indication of sky behind my little critters. And I'm drawing it out with an even paler blue water brush, as well as my aqua brush. I'm not going to draw this color out all the way to the edges. I'm just going to allow it to fade out a bit. I'm trying to blot up some of that blue color on the right, just a little bit too dark in that area. And I'm not putting a solid color or a solid layer of blue down. I want the white of the paper to show through a little bit, just to look kind of cloudy and pale. While this panel is drying, I'm going to work on a little window frame for this card. So I cut out a piece of purple cardstock with an oval die, as well as a little frame for it. I'm going to adhere my frame down first. And I put several layers of cardstock behind this frame just to give it a little bit of dimension. And now I can place some foam tape behind my purple cardstock and attach this to the panel. Sorry, my head gets in the way there. I just want it to be straight. And it's not perfectly straight, so I pull out my long sharp scissors just to cut off the white piece of paper that's showing through a little bit. I'm trying to be careful not to cut into the purple cardstock at all. I stamped out my sentiment onto a piece of pink cardstock. And it says, I'm here, rain or shine. I think that looks so cute. I put a little piece of foam tape behind that so it matches the height of my card. And then I can snip off the excess. The right edge of my sentiment needed just a little bit of foam tape too, so it wouldn't sag down. But I'm just going to carefully pull up the sentiment and place that foam tape in place. I'm going to attach this to a white card base. I'm going to glue down a few sequins across my card. These are some bright yellow ones and some clear ones. And this one I snipped in half just so I could snug it up right next to the frame. And that's it for card number two. I just love how this one turned out. It looks so Eastery and pastel y and cute, I think. On card number three, I'm going to use another piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth paper. This paper also works great for ink blending, which is what I'm going to do next. So I'm stamping up my image first. And I'm going to use the same mask I used in the last card to protect my image. And then I can put down another piece of post-it note tape. And now for some blending fun. I'm going to start out with some blues at the top. The first one I'm using is called Salty Ocean. The next ink is called Tumbled Glass. It's just a paler blue. And this is going to be the sky behind my little duck. Next is Bundled Sage and Crushed Olive. I'm going back and forth between these colors to get a smooth blend. And then I decide to bring in different colors of green. I wasn't liking the green color combo that I was using. I'm going to bring in Lucky Clover and Peeled Paint. I'm going to allow this panel to dry before my next step. I'm going to be coloring in my little duck with some Copic markers. So here is the panel without the masks. I think it looks so crisp and cute. And this umbrella is going to be red. So I'm starting off with some soft pinks and working my way up to the darker reds. I'm trying to use all the colors of the rainbow in this little scene. And I do end up using all of the colors except for purple. I should have added some purple sequins or something. But I just love how bright this panel is. So my duck is going to be a little bit darker on this card. 
coming in with my lightest color first, and then I put darker colors of yellow in the shadows. I'm just trying to get a smooth blend. I'm doing the same for his beak. I think I use about three different colors to get a nice blend. And then I'm going to use some green Copic markers to put a little ground underneath my duck. And this is the fun part. I come in with my white jelly roll pen just to add some raindrops coming down. I'm adding some white highlights on the duck as well as the boots and even in the grass. My next step is to cut this out with another faux stitched die. I also stamped the sentiment that says hello. And I'm going to attach this to a green cardstock card base. I'm just adhering that down flat. I'm adding a few clear sequins just around my sentiment. And that completes my third card. Thanks for watching, my crafty friends. You have a chance to win a $25 gift certificate at the Not Too Shabby Shop by commenting below. And you'll have an even better chance of winning if you comment at all of the stops along the way. So have fun hopping along with us. There are a lot of beautiful projects to see in this blog hop. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.